morning and welcome to your Friday. Yes, it's Friday. You made it. So I hope that you have an amazing day and I hope you've got a nice weekend planned. Um, my morning has already been productive, guys. Like I have done um, two loads of washing, two, two loads of washing because that thing happened, you know, when you're just living your life and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't have any, I don't have any pants. And then you look at your washing basket and it's like bursting and you're like, oh my God, my washing basket is really full. And then you look to the side of your washing basket and there's like another little pile that's started to accumulate of overflow. It's like, oh my God, how did that even happen? So I know such an interesting story for your Friday morning, but I know you like to know these things. So yeah, two loads of washing and one more ready to go. I'm going to run out of hanging space, but that's my problem. You don't have to worry about that. So let's do a nice drawing to start our day and get us into a good mood for our Friday. I mean, hopefully you're in a good mood anyway, because it's Friday. So I'm going to spin you around. Oh, I haven't even taken off yesterday's version, but I'm so chuffed with how this came out, by the way. Let's slice it off. I think that this is a nice, a nice different painting. Such a satisfying thing to do. Put off all that gum. So see you later yesterday. It's a new day. We're gonna start with something new. So all we are gonna do in no particular order or thought pattern is we're going to draw lots of draw lots of lines. So for example, I'll draw a curve line like this, maybe another one here. Maybe I'll do a straight line coming up. We're just going to fill our page with lines of different size, different strength, um, not strength, <laughs> straightness. Can cut, some can come off the page, some on the page. Trying to get them in slightly different positions from one another. I mean, already I like this. Already. Let just, let's just leave it here. <laughs> Is it going to get any better? I'm not sure. Okay, now what we're going to do with these lines is we're going to make each of these lines into a little thing. So namely a little leaf, but I don't want to put that idea in your mind because I want you to be free. So with this one, I'm going to start with this big one. I'm going to leave a little stem at the base, like about that big. And then I'm just going to draw different shapes or like a shape coming off of it on both sides. I'm just using this shape as an example. It could be any shape though and then have them coming up the stem. They could slightly get slightly smaller. They could all be the same size. Mine are getting slightly smaller as they go. And kind of curving with the line that I drew. And maybe I'll just finish it off like that. And there we have leaf number one. And then we go to another leaf and we do the same vibe. So with this leaf though, I'm gonna start with this other big one. I'm gonna draw the stem again. And then instead of doing lots of individual um, parts, I'm going to do one big shape that comes to the tip there. Like that another leaf could also add lines in it that kind of go up to the points or the bumps that I made. Simple but effective don't you think? Okay I'm going to come down here to this guy because he's also quite a big one. I'd recommend starting with the big ones because then you have room for their leaves if they if they get bigger than you imagine. With this one I've done the stem again and I'm just going to do straight like 
chip style, little French fry style leaves on both sides. Oh, that's a little bit smaller on this side, don't know why. My brain can't seem to do a mirror effect. <laughs> I was already thinking, it's Friday, don't need to try too hard today. So that's my little fry style. And then you could also add a little circle on the end of each of these, maybe. They don't have to be real, real leaves. Okie dokie. I'm going to move on to this guy because he's quite, quite a chunky guy as well. Do the stem at the base there. And then I'm going to do a shape that kind of comes out and there's like a mixture between this one and this one. So it's going to come out and come in nearly to the base, but then not quite nearly to the base, nearly to the base, gonna come all the way around. Let's see if I can do this backwards. I want a bit of shape on the top bit of, of the point and smooth on the base. <laughs> Did I manage that? Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. I've gone over this one, but that's okay, because this I'm going to do as a really tiny little spiky leaf with a little circle on, on each of the ends. Like that, and it can overlap, that's not a problem. All right. Let's go on to maybe one coming up from the top corner here. So I'm gonna do this as a kind of thick fern style. Going off the page, making its presence known. Got a wobbly hand. Like that. Then I'll come down here and just do a kind of wild, quick one. Aggressively drawn. <laughs> Let out that pent up anger. If you've got any in you, I hope not, but if you do, let it out. I'm going to add a bigger stem to this one. I'm going to do a nice little seed or um, bauble-like, you know, like a Christmas tree bauble, like a posh one that's not round, like that. Mm. What else can we do? There's so much, so many options. I'm going to have a little stem here. Do round, round leaves, bunch up. Could of course get some inspiration from looking in, um, or like Googling leaf illustrations or looking at different uh, pattern designs, often they use leaf shapes or nature shapes. Um, I've definitely looked at lots of different kind of examples. Or just see what comes to mind, doing random shapes and have them coming in all different directions. Let's do a fancy one down here. I have trouble with the mirroring on both sides. They always look really nice on one side and then on the other side it's like I can't get my hand to do the same thing. Let's 
Let's do a little one up here. Just kind of seed shapes. Always works for leaves. Nice little sunflower seed. Maybe some little lines coming from between the leaves with little line and dots, lines and dots. Circles are the best, they always just add a little, little something something. Okay, then I'm gonna do a really big stem down here and then a nice thin blade style leaf coming off the page there. Do another aggressive, semi-aggressive drawing style. It's quite fun. This one, let do big, sharp. Ooh. Have one coming off the page as well. This little guy. Just making the space work for me there. <laughs> What else could do? Kind of crazy old leaf up here. Maybe it's a little bit mangled, a bit dry, with just crazy fire squiggles. Because it can't all be perfect. Quite like that look. I'll do a nice neat one next to it to contrast. With a uniform V. Going off the page. This one, again, the classic seed shape. And then I've finished all of my lines, but now I can look at my, my negative space and just think, what can I add there? I could add more leaves if I wanted to, or I could just add some, maybe some berries or something. And do a few circles in the gap. Maybe some more down here. And some more here. This is where you could get creative. I'm sure you've got your ideas brimming in your mind of what to kind of fill the gap with. And then you could also do just the age old mark making. So just filling in a bit of the space because, or you could just leave it, but I think I want a bit more going on. Adding a bit there. A bit here. Just random marks, whatever comes to mind. Adding maybe some longer lines down here. See what I mean? It's kind of, it makes it busy, but it also kind of adds a bit of energy to the drawing. Just random squiggle lines. Adds a bit of energy. 
We had some big Like that. How, how is it looking? Need something here. Maybe I'll do some little oblong shapes. Don't want to do circles because there's circles on that nearby leaf. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then maybe here, I'll just do some more big oval shapes. We're just using the same techniques in a lot of these drawing exercises, but they're simple but effective techniques that you can really use when you're feeling in a bit of a rut with your drawing and you want to add a bit of interest or intrigue. Seven dots. It's like, don't give up on it, just kind of play around with it, play around with the different, different things you can do. Spreading the ink with my hands. Add a few more bits there. There we go. And I think that's probably all that I'll do. I might just add a bit of weight to this little guy down here because I feel like it's a bit bare. Like that, yeah, I like that, I like that. And I've attempted to put something here, but maybe I'll just leave that because I don't want it to look too hectic. I might just add a little kind of like twiggy, twiggy bit there. <laughs> All right. And let's do a little bit of painting. So I'm aware that some of the dots and stuff are gonna be still a bit wet like they were yesterday, but that's okay. Um, and what am I gonna do? I might paint the background first. I might just paint the whole thing in one color and then go back in and paint the leaves because otherwise it's gonna be a real difficult to paint the background around all of this bit and I'm feeling kind of yellow yellowy um orangey vibes today so I'm gonna get my cadmium yellow and my Windsor red and just lay it on with a lot of water because I want it to spread and just be a thin thin layer of colour that I can paint over on the actual leaves but this is definitely the easiest way to do it rather than painting all the leaves and then painting the background around it it'll be take me ages and this is pretty satisfying to paint a whole page just make sure that your pen if you're doing it this way is water resistant waterproof because if it's not you'll get a big smudgy situation which you know maybe that's what you want but it's always horrible when it's a surprise <laughs> coming back up to the bit that I started with because when you paint in with watercolors they do dry quickly the water the paper's busy absorbing all the wetness and giving you these kind of drying marks or water lines so you have to be a bit mindful if you're painting a big area to continue to activate the, the bits that are drying before they're fully dry so that you don't get that watermarky look. Add a 
little bit more depth, a bit more color around the edges. But of course, this will also dry a little bit lighter than how it first appears, as all watercolor does. See how quickly I'm applying and moving it around in a really loose way, not being too precious, because of course the water does most of the work, ensuring that there's nice soft drying situation going on. And you also have to be mindful of the paper you're using, because if you go too hard on lower quality paper, then it can bobble up a little bit, which can be really frustrating. So just like that, I think that will do. I could also, while it's wet, add in a little bit of the old pink, because you know me, maybe I'll just kind of drop it into some of the areas while it's still a bit wet. This pink color's good because it spreads quite easily without much encouragement. Just in the patterned areas maybe, we'll go through a little pinky Pinky vibes there a bit. It's very, very cutesy, isn't it? <laughs> See, it's already a little bit dry here, so I can just spread this out. But I like the areas of light that are coming, coming through around these bits and that bit. Let's pink down here. A little bit more water, a little bit more pink. See how it's spreading so nicely. Like that. And I think that I am gonna might have to leave it there unless I can wait for a, a hot set and um, then go in with some color. But I think what I will do when it is completely dry is go in with a, um, like an ice, I, I was saying an icy green, like a, bluey green color and go on top or you could go for um, a kind of brown brown leaf so or you could go for random colors purple purple and yellow is always pretty funky or just leave it like that if you like it or just add another layer of different color over the top once it's completely dry but I think I'm going to leave it there for today because it's um it's a bit risky to go in and paint the detail while the background may still be wet and it will go blob. And then you have a like ugly blobbing of darker color that which I don't want. So I'll leave it there for today. But that. And I have come up with a nice page of uh, watercolor leaves or leaf drawing. And it's inspired you because I think that's quite a simple way to get yourself into um, like drawing kind of patterns or you could, um, do you find a repeat pattern in that or you could turn that into a nice um, gift wrap or something or just a print like a something to put on your wall I think it's a successful way of starting really simple and building up your confidence knowledge experience and um, imagination with it so anyway blah 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 it's Friday nurse let's go it's time to get on with our day I hope that you have amazing Fridays thank you so much for joining me today I will be back on Monday for another week of goodness so I will see you then take care of yourselves and yeah happy weekend send this baby bye